show me. Hello everyone, I'm the Martial Arts Phone Freak and welcome to Kung Fu Essential, a new series where I pick a martial arts actor or director and hopefully introduce you to five films that I believe are essential to not just get acclimated to the actor, but also get acclimated to the Kung Fu genre as a whole. For the first episode, we are diving into the filmography of someone who many would agree is the modern king of Kung Fu cinema. Perhaps you are familiar with him from the latest Triple X film starring alongside Vin Diesel. Maybe you're familiar with him as Chirrut Imwe from Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Or maybe you just keep seeing him pop up on your Netflix a lot and you figure, you know what, I'm going to dive into some of his movies. Well, here are five essential films of Donnie Yen. This is going to go in chronological order, so let's start from the beginning. The very beginning. Donnie Yen was born in the Canton province of China on July 27th, 1963. At the age of two, his family moved to Hong Kong, and only nine years later, they moved to the States, settling down in Boston, Massachusetts. Donnie Yen started training in Wushu at a very young age, just about the time he could start walking. Now, it wasn't hard for Donnie Yen to start training, seeing as his mother was actually a famous kung fu master. Donnie Yen's mother was Bao Sim Mok, who is a Wushu grandmaster who ran the uh, Chinese Wushu, Wushu Research Institute in Boston, Massachusetts for a while. Eventually, Donnie Yen grew into those edgy teen years, and his parents had enough of his crap, and so they sent him to boarding school. And by boarding school, I mean a two-year training program with the Beijing Wushu team. It was on this expedition that Donnie Yen came across someone very important. While passing through Hong Kong, Donnie Yen met Yuan Wu Ping, one of the most famous kung fu directors and most famous uh, just action directors and uh, action coordinators in all of film history. Of course, it was only the early 80s, so he had not yet established this, uh, this reputation, but he already had a few pretty good films under his belt. Even if you are new to the kung fu genre, there is a chance you have seen something from Yuan Wu Ping. Most likely, you have seen The Matrix. It is here in the early 80s when Donnie Yen's film career began, and while he does have a few leading roles that probably deserve a spot on this list, I am actually going to hop ahead to 1990 with Tiger Cage 2. Tiger Cage 2 is maybe the weakest film on this list, but that should not take away anything from the action in the film. The film was directed by Yuan Wu Ping, stars Donnie Yen, Rosamund Kwan, David Yu, and Robin Shao, or Robin Shu. I never remember how to pronounce his last name, but you're probably familiar with him as Liu Kang from the Mortal Kombat films. That's right, good wholesome Liu Kang is the villain this time. In Tiger Cage 2, Donnie Yen plays an ex-cop who alongside a uh, divorce lawyer is caught up in a murder and some embezzlement schemes and they have to team up with a uh, gangster to clear their names and put a stop to Robin Shu or Robin Shao. Uh, and what they are stopping him from doing is, I don't, I don't know, more murder, I think. I'm pretty sure it's just more murder. Tiger Cage 2 has everything you would expect from Hong Kong action. You've got guns, stunts, gritty brutality, comedy, and of course, kung fu. If you want to ease yourself into the genre, then Tiger Cage 2's modern setting probably really helps. There isn't any fantastical wire work, and the action is really grounded. The comedy is mostly slapstick, but let's be honest, if you're watching this movie, you're watching it for the action. And for that, you're in luck. Donnie Yen gets a lot of really cool moments throughout, but it all culminates in three awesome fights in the final act. 
one against John Salvini and another against Michael Woods, two people that he also fought in the 1989 film In the Line of Duty 4. That film honestly could have taken this spot, but for me, Tiger Cage 2 just barely edged it out. However, In the Line of Duty 4 is on Prime Video, so if you wanted to check that one out, it's readily available. Tiger Cage 2 final fight is of course between Donnie Yen and Robin Shu, or Robin Shao, and uh, it is a very good fight. However, Robin Shu has a fight scene with David Wu just before that that honestly I think is just a little bit better than their fight, and it, it deserves a lot more credit. Tiger Cage 2 is one of Donnie Yen's first leading films, and he set the bar really high for himself. <laughs> Skip ahead a few years and you've got films like Once Upon a Time in China 2 where Donnie Yen is the villain, Dragon's Inn, and the fantasy epic Butterfly and Sword. But in 1983, we get one of Donnie Yen's most famous films, Iron Monkey. <laughs> Iron Monkey was also directed by Yuan Wu Ping and stars Donnie Yen, Zhan Wang, Shi Man Sang, and Rong Guang Yu. The film tells the story of a vigilante who steals money from the corrupt government and gives it out to the poor that are in need. When Donnie Yen's Wong Kei Ying comes to town, his son is thrown in the dungeon and he is forced to track down this vigilante in return of his son. Seeing as this is pretty much just a Robin Hood story, it's fairly easy to follow. But what makes it an essential kung fu viewing experience for Donnie Yen is that Iron Monkey may be the most perfect intro film for kung fu cinema. The narrative is full of light drama and contains a lot of Hong Kong style comedy that many kung fu films had at the time. And the fight scenes filter in something from almost every aspect of kung fu cinema. If you like comedic action, Iron Monkey has it. If you like fantasy wire work, Iron Monkey has it. If you like grounded kung fu, then Iron Monkey has it. Now, the version of the film that I have seen and many people will probably come across is the 2001 US release. This release saw several changes from the 1993 Hong Kong original. These changes include taking out scenes that were maybe too violent, taking out some of the comedy which was sort of interspersed throughout the fight scenes that they thought American audiences might find out of place and weird. Some of the subtitles have even been changed so much that the US release story does not fully match up with the Hong Kong 1993 movie. These are just a few changes that were made to the 2001 release of the film, but in fairness, I really do think that this makes it more palatable for a Western audience. And while this may rub some people the wrong way, I do think it is things like this that may actually encourage a larger audience, a more wide group, a wide base of people to check out foreign film and the Kung Fu genre. So if you're new to Kung Fu cinema, then this film is definitely essential to not just Donnie Yen, but Kung Fu cinema as a whole. The rest of the 90s saw a few more great films from Donnie Yen, but I believe it was the 2000s where Donnie Yen truly became a huge star. In the new millennium, Donnie Yen got really into mixed martial arts and this was very evident in his fight scene with the legendary Sammo Hung in SPL Killzone, a movie that I know a lot of people are going to say should be on the essential list. But I think that the third essential Donnie Yen film is 2007's Flashpoint. This time Wilson Yip is in the director's chair and the cast consists of Donnie Yen, Louis Ku, Colin Chow, Bing Bing Fan, Kent Chan, and Zheng Yu. He's my favorite. The plot here isn't anything crazy as it's really just two cops against a dangerous violent gang. And some people may disagree but a lot of this movie is a little forgettable and kind of boring. What makes this film so essential though is the action is some of the very best you're going to find. There are only a few moments of it, but every second of the action is absolutely stunning with MMA, Judo, BJJ, 
kung fu, everything coming together as every star is absolutely going for it. The movie opens right up with Donnie Yen throwing an amazing, gorgeous, perfect flying armbar on Louis Koo, just setting the stage for the perfect blend of MMA and kung fu. The final fight scene is regarded as one of the greatest fight scenes ever put to film, and for good reason. Donnie Yen and Colin Chow beat the absolute hell out of each other for almost eight minutes straight, throwing punches and kicks from every direction. Even though the movie as a whole isn't perfect, the final act brings it all home, wrapped in a perfect bow in the form of Donnie Yen choking the life out of Colin Chow before just punching the shit out of him. SPL Killzone was just a taste of how Donnie Yen could change the game, but Flashpoint is Donnie Yen truly evolving as a performer, offering up something that wasn't just flashy kicks and fast choreography. Not that there's anything wrong with those things. In a way, it gets a spiritual sequel in Special ID, but even the well-rounded, awesome fight scene of Donnie Yen versus Andy Ahn holds nothing to Flashpoint. You want that, Tony? We don't have to go very far for the next essential film, as just the next year Donnie Yen would get his most famous movie yet, and play his most famous character, and he was in a Star Wars. In 2008, directed by Wilson Yip again, Donnie Yen starred alongside Simon Yam, Lin Zhang, Hiroyuki Ikeuchi, Ka Tung Lam, Xu Wang Fan, and Jing Yu. He's my favorite. Donnie Yen plays the titular Ip Man, who in real life was the real Wing Chun teacher of a young Bruce Lee, and since this movie, has become a serious folk hero in China. The film contains two consecutive stories, with the first half simply being about Donnie Yen as Ip Man taking on these travelers through town that have been embarrassing all of the local masters. The second half is much more grim as the Japanese invade and uh, Ip Man must learn that he can't really solve everything with his fists. This film was already gaining worldwide popularity, but thanks to something like Netflix, it's really almost crossed that line into mainstream. But what about this movie made it so damn popular? Well, firstly, the Kung Fu style of Wing Chun really had not had this much of global attention in film since probably Prodigal Son or the Michelle Yeoh film Wing Chun. And even then, you could definitely argue that those films were never really worldwide hits. But of course, it also helped that this movie is nothing but Donnie Yen kicking the living hell out of every single person, walking through them like air. He really doesn't have a single threat in this movie. He beats everyone very easily. For example, Ip Man contains one fight scene that probably has a larger popularity, a larger reputation than the film itself. Donnie Yen takes on 10 black belts in a hailstorm of epic brutality that, as I stated before, he simply walks through them. They are no threat to him. He beats them very easily, but it's stunning. You can't look away. You would think it would be boring watching one man be completely unbeatable for almost two hours, but no, not really. It helps that the legendary Samo Hung was the action coordinator for this film. He definitely knows what he's doing behind the scenes. But it also helps that the story, characters, and acting are also just all really good. This is just the first of four films, and while the others may have not reached the popularity or level of excitement of the first, they're all still really good and it's definitely a series worth checking out. And as the series progresses, the threats get harder, the threats become more serious, and Donnie Yen must adapt to survive. It is undeniable that the Ip Man series has helped bring a much larger audience to Kung Fu Cinema, and if you're not on this bandwagon, if you're not on this hype train, what are you doing? Where have you been?
Jump ahead a few more years and you get awesome films like Bodyguards and Assassins, Ip Man 2, Legend of the Fist Return of Chen Zhen, and The Lost Bladesman. But we're stopping off at 2011 for Wuja, aka Dragon. Dragon was directed by Peter Hosun Chan and stars Donnie Yen, Wei Tang, Takeshi, Kaneshiro, and two kung fu legends in Kara Hui and Jimmy Wang Yu. Donnie Yen is a simple villager trying to live a peaceful life with his wife and two kids when two sort of gangster assassin kind of people come to town looking for an old member who deserted them a long time ago. All the while, a detective is going around investigating the deaths of two local criminals and he will inevitably come face to face with this gang. I really don't want to spoil much of this movie, but that kind of feels impossible. Dragon stands out for its excellent story and characters, backed by just gorgeous classic kung fu. The action takes a little bit to kick off, but once it gets to it, it is absolutely breathtaking and worth the wait. Everyone puts in an excellent performance, and Kara Hui and Jimmy Wang Yu definitely show that they can still throw down on screen. Even when there isn't any action going on, Takeshi Kaneshiro still absolutely owns the screen that is already being flooded with gorgeous cinematography. Today, it feels like Donnie Yen is either known for Wing Chun as Ip Man or some sort of mix of Kung Fu and MMA, but Dragon really shows that his roots are in Wushu. The Kung Fu in this movie is wonderful. Seeing as the movie came out in 2011, I could see how many would say that I think that Maybe he hasn't had a good movie since 2011. This is his last great film, but no. The 2010s, he absolutely dominated. He made a ton of excellent films. Any one of those movies could have taken this spot, but for me, Dragon stands out because of a wonderful story, awesome performances, incredible fight scenes. Dragon really contains some of the most perfect kung fu you're gonna come across, at least in my opinion. So there you have it, five Donnie Yen films that I believe are essential to not just get acquainted with Donnie Yen, but to get acclimated to the kung fu genre as a whole. Tell me what you think in the comment section down below. If you've never seen these films, are you gonna check them out? And if you have seen these films, then what other Donnie Yen movies would you throw in as essential? What are your five essential Donnie Yen films? Let me know, and when you're done, head over to Martial Arts Film Freak on Facebook. Remember to like and follow over there, comment on stuff and talk to people about your favorite martial arts films. Don't forget to like and share this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and as always, have a good day.